Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Hopefully everybody is having a good day. As for me, uh, it's been busy as usual, but I'm still here, still pushing, still pressing, and still have, still have more work to do. I'm uh, just going to <clears throat> do it from home. Uh, you're going to have to forgive the sound of the rain and the wipers. Uh, it is what it is. Before I get started, don't forget, we're in the middle of a fundraiser. Uh, Black Man Lead, the work we're doing in general is immense and so necessary. And when it comes to Black, Lead, Black Man Lead, it's even that much more necessary and it's growing increasingly necessary as we look at how things are unfolding culturally, politically, economically, socially, academically, and more. So we need your support. If you believe in the work we're doing, go to the description box, click on the link, and show some love. If you don't want to go uh, and give through the link, you can always use the organization's Cash App account. Uh, that information is also in the description box. Uh, I was having a discussion earlier about some of the influences that negatively impact the community and operate in, in an anti-socialization uh, mode. And, and when I say anti-socialization, it's, it's socialization, but it's socialization in a way that's anti-social to black progress. It doesn't help the black social enclave or the black cultural enclave uh, collective. And so one of the most powerful weapons we have is media. And one of the most prevalent forces in media is music. And we cannot ignore music and the manner in which it is influencing our youth. And we have to talk about that. We, you know, we can talk about all the programs. We can talk about Black Men League. But one of the things that, you know, I immediately had to understand when it came to how effective this program was going to be is how could I effectively, in the least antagonistic way, reduce uh, access to music, screen time, and so much more that was negatively impacting the minds of young people. And in this instance, young black boys, but we're talking holistically across the board. Well. The discussion quickly became more than just, okay, we need to do a better job of monitoring the music. The discussion ended up being around why does the music exist in the first place? How is it that it's acceptable to push music that glorifies black males murdering black males? It glorifies uh, misogyny and, and, and date rape and rape in general, it, it, it glorifies the drug culture. And all of these things have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt to be detrimental to black progress and totally destructive for black men and dangerous for black women, black females, period. And so why does it exist? And the easy answer that, that, that people revert to is, well, you know, white record labels own, you know, uh, own, the, own the business. They, they, they own it, and, and, and they do, they own it. They determine what they're putting out. But here's the thing. That's this thing that you learn in economics in high school. It's called supply and demand. For anything to have value, it has to be in demand. Supply will determine the price based on the demand. If you have a surplus of something, it's gonna be cheap. If it's hard to get and rare, it's gonna be more expensive. So the fewer things you have that's in the higher demand, the more it costs you, that's it. So if you're making a lot of music and rap, now let's be clear, 
a lot of the consumers are white, but check this out. That's not the only problem is who's buying and consuming it. It's that it's available and it's okay. You can check any other market. You can do your research yourself and ask yourself if you went into that market, Hispanic, Arab, white, Jewish, uh, and you Asian, and you took music and you said, okay, here's some music, and it's gonna talk about raping your women, your sons killing each other, it's gonna talk about uh, explicit drug use, uh, illegal activity, and it's going to be prevalent in the music. You're going to hear it consistently over and over again. It's going to be, and, and, and say for instance, it's in a Jewish community. You're going to say it's going to be anti-Semitic. Uh, it's going to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, it's going to be have a bunch of racial slurs that are offensive to you, but we're going to put it out there. What do you think the answer would be? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, you put it out there, we come rain fire on your label. We're gonna rain fire. We, you, you'll lose all of your uh, sponsorships and ad revenue because we come in hard in the paint. They're not gonna have it. So why is it that it's okay over here? Because you can go to any other market and it's not okay that their children... Now, here's the thing. They'll listen to rap music degrading black people. They'll listen to rap music with misogyny about black women. They'll listen to it and there's this uh, thing about it. They, 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 they consume it at a high level. They love that shit. They love to hear the, 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 the way that black people talk to each other, handle each other in a negative sense. And, and they love to imagine and, and, and assume that that's how black people are. It allows them to consistently animalize us. It, it allows them to consistently marginalize us. It justifies the way that we are handled and treated and, 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 and dealt with with police uh, and so much more. It is amazing how that happens. And so the question stopped being simply, why do we have to monitor the music that our kids listen to and the question became why is it even available and it's because number one there's nobody standing up and saying absolutely not there's no one standing up and saying this cannot be the case and so that is so important for us to understand that as long as we are tolerating it, as long as we stand up and we so there's something going on, something I'm smelling. As long as we keep going the way we're going, we're going to have problems. We're going to have a situation where we are going to consistently see a decline in moral values, a decline in standards, a decline in the way we love ourselves, a decline in the way we move. There's something that we are going to have to change. Now, again, on the on the front end, we are really pushing and fighting to be a national network and a universal rite of passage so that we can teach black men early on what black manhood is all about. On the, on the back end, we're gonna have to answer some real hard questions about what we're going to do about this stuff being pumped into our communities. Why we can turn on the radio and it's on. You can't do that in any other community. They'll listen to our music of us degrading us but they're not gonna have music degrading them. And we gotta ask ourselves, why is it okay for us? Why is it something acceptable for us? Why aren't we pounding and beating and saying, that's disrespectful, that's dis racial, uh, that's destructive, it's absolutely un unacceptable, and then be ready to take economic action 
that's something else we got. We got to learn how to start pooling our resources and pulling our money from places that don't represent us properly. Places that don't sit up and do, you know, what needs to be done for us. So, with all that being said, look, we've got work to do. We have so much work to do. I'm going to give you an example, then I'm going to shut it down. Do y'all remember, I can't remember the song, but I remember what happened. When, when Rick Ross had this big sweet deal with Reebok, and he had this song come out. 98% of the song is about negative stuff, blacks and misogyny and all of this stuff, right? You know, it's, it's not a very endearing and highly uplifting song about black humanity, black culture. Okay, it's typical rap music. There's one line, literally one line, that can be interpreted as supporting date rape. Man, those people rose up, and what gets me is nobody caught it. Those people rose up and said, we will not tolerate it, we will not have it. They rode hard on Reebok, and Reebok cut this cat immediately. No, we're going to talk with him. No, we're going to sit down. We're going to make him apologize. They cut cut him, kill the deal, everything behind that one line because that one line was so offensive that they were just simply not going to tolerate it. Now, here's the crazy thing. Every line in that was offensive. But it didn't matter because every other line in that was about black people. And it goes to show you how people think about us and how we need to start thinking and loving and caring about ourselves. I'm not going to keep pushing it, but I had to stop in. I had to drop in. I had to put it on because that conversation was just weighing on me. And hopefully we really take some time to think about these questions and ask these questions and sit down and talk about what really needs to be done. Again, I'm going to ask as we close out, support the work we do. That's so important. Show some love because we are so behind right now. And it's easy to sit up and talk about it and people sit up and you kind of hear it. You're so used to hearing it. This is the scary part. We're so used to hearing. We're so used to hearing that we're behind, that things are getting bad, that we have become almost callous to it. We've become insensitive to it. And what that means is it'll keep happening and keep getting worse. And we'll keep doing nothing because we've heard it for so long that it doesn't move us. That's something that we can't afford to do. This is real. And what I try to impress upon people is, for somebody like me that's in their 50s, you might be sitting up saying, hell man, 15, 20 more years, I'm sitting back, I'm chilling, I ain't caring. But the bottom line is, I've got children, I've got grandchildren, and I, I'm eventually going to have great-grandchildren, and they're going to have children. And they're going to come into a world that I will have impacted or not. And I cannot live my life knowing that I could have done something that made things better for my grandkids. And so that's where my heart is. And I'm challenging every last one of you to make it where your heart is. On that note, I'm going to get off here. You guys have an unbelievable day.